What I thought I'd focus on today is talk a little bit about the programs we are financing in Africa. Uh, financing ICT infrastructure, ICT content and skills, and drilling down on the impact on education. We're also talking about technology to transform every sector, to transform the delivery of education services, to transform the delivery of health, agriculture, uh, mitigation of disasters. We're looking at it from a transformational angle. We're talking a little bit about our portfolio in Africa, just trying to show you what we're investing, where is it going, and what we expect the impact, the return would be, and then focusing a little bit on education at the margins. Connect is very important for, um, for all of us today. You do need that broadband network. You need connectivity, which in many parts of the African continent does not exist. How to help countries such as Rwanda, a landlocked country, be able to connect to international bandwidth at a reasonable, affordable price for its private sector, its citizens, and its academic institutes to be able to deliver good services. The second pillar we're looking at is the one that I described earlier, ICT to transform everything. ICT as a tool to revolutionize public administration, the way a citizen receives certificates, licenses, or any document from the government. So how to change the way government works, how to update the legislation, and tap onto modern technology that exists already without having to spend years on developing software. The third aspect, which is also very dear to the Internet to forum participant, is technology for innovation. When you look at the technology today, all these customer-based systems that exist that are amazing, that you can buy off a package and deploy right away and could solve a problem instantaneously, how do you unlock the innovative power of these young, smart, uh, eager, African young men and women, how do you use what exists already in the world and help them leapfrog? What I'm going to talk about in the transformation agenda is just specifically the, the education sector. And you can see from that second column on the lower, lower right that let it be connecting the schools to one another from the basic school, secondary school, and academic universities. Let it be having access to online content. No need to reinvent content. It exists already. As the president of Georgetown said, it's a global public good. Let's reuse it. Let's roll it out to as many human beings as possible. We see that as part of our role in ICT for transformation. And it's no surprise that most of the education projects we have are between 40 and 50 percent investments in ICT. Nothing can happen without large investment in ICTs, in capacity building, and in the skills to maintain this ICT. We also have some specific country projects, like in Ghana, in Benin, in Rwanda, and now coming up Sierra Leone, where governments come to us and ask us to help them to provide policy advice, technical assistance, and investment to create an ecosystem where ICT is a basic pillar for the growth for the country. And now the challenge for us is to use that network to deliver services, services for the citizens in their language, based on their needs, services that help them transcend poverty, to be able to exchange data, to have open systems, to be able to interoperate with one another at very low cost. Now, as a second stage, we're really trying to have all these systems talk to one another exchange data that is meaningful for decision making. Some of the trends we're seeing in transformation are, as you all know, mobile. Mobile is ubiquitous. We have more than 650 million uh, people in Africa having access to mobile phone, much more that, than those that have access to clean water or sanitation. This is an incredible revolution, and we have not yet harnessed how can we make the best use of these mobile networks. How can you use mobile phone to create a culture of peace, a culture of good values everywhere around the world? And we are here thinking, how can we use mobile phones for education? How can we use them even for basic literacy? Why do young women, boys and women have to sit under the sun for six hours, right? Trying to sell potatoes or, or rice. And why couldn't they use their mobile phone to learn something during that time? And how can governments and donors and the World Bank help make that as cheap as possible, if not free, 
so they don't have to count the minutes and have to disconnect because it's too expensive. The other trend which is amazing, which the two speakers before me touched on, is the cloud. So there is so much content out there in the cloud. And now our challenge is, let's have this inventory of what's out there, but let's reuse it. And again, let's spend that money we have buying the devices, building the network, creating the skills and maintaining it, as opposed to this never-ending reinvention of the same content. The fourth trend I want to talk about is that big movement around open government and open data, which makes it so much more transparent for everybody to see, for instance, test outcomes, education outcomes. Who are the good teachers? What is working here? What is not? In terms of education at the margin, we often hear this, this question, is Africa ready to become a knowledge economy continent? And the answer is, of course it is. And what is needed is really having the policymakers behind them, investing in education, investing in the networks, in the skills, and the infrastructure needed. What is the most important thing, as far as we're concerned, is the affordable connectivity. Affordable, available, with competition, and with ta staff that have the skills to maintain it. How do we make sure that the next billion of kids, youth, and their parents have access to all that knowledge we have? How do we make sure the teachers are trained? All these very basic things, hardware, fixing hardware, changing, uh, you know, changing pieces of equipment, which we, we never thought about in the past, but are really needed and can help create jobs. Thank you very much.